Delicious, family-pleasing meals out of your pantry are a totally real thing. Check out the ones I created this week that my family loved. Hey, hey friends, it is time for another what's for dinner video. These are all pantry meals. As you guys know, I've been enjoying the pantry challenge over the month of January. All of my meals are created from mostly pantry staples aside for some fresh produce that I do purchase every week. Don't have a garden, don't have a homestead. And my family likes fresh produce. We like salad, we like fruit, all of that fun stuff. So I have been going to get that. But all of these meals are created from things in your freezer, things in your fridge, things in your pantry. They are things that most people have on hand most of the time. So you guys can make these meals at home just like I did. All right, let's go ahead and dive right in. Just a heads up, I am filming this at the end of the week. My family was sick this week. It started <laughs> with one kid and it's worked its way through another kid and then I finally got it, so fun, fun. Um, I'm actually about to film the last meal of the week. We are having pizza, but I was not on camera much just because it was one of those weeks where things were just not going my way. <laughs> it happens, it happens to the best of us. You moms out there know exactly what I'm talking about. When one of your kids gets sick, they all get sick and everything just flows through the family and it gets crazy sometimes. It was like that here. I am still getting over it. Um, it is kind of settled in my chest right now. I'm not contagious, I don't have a fever anymore, but I'm not 100%, so I really was not in the video a whole ton this week, but that's okay. Anyway, I'm about to get started filming this last meal, so check it out, let me know what you think. All the recipes will be linked in the description or written out down in the description, depending on what they are. Hope you guys love them. All right, this is our weekend feast. I made all of this food yesterday. It is Sunday in my world. Um, I wanted to film, but one of my kids got sick. Um, the other one fell on his fractured elbow. So it's just been a bit of a rocky weekend. We've been making perler beads. And so I've been ironing the little things they make just like nonstop. But I did make uh, hamburgers and hot dogs. Well, I made the patties and stuff. My husband grilled them. I made some deviled eggs. We've got all the fixins. My son actually pulled some frozen fries. We had two half packs of frozen fries. And he fried those yesterday, my oldest son Xander did, and then he put um, Cajun seasoning on them, some chili for the hot dogs, lettuce, tomato, onions, sauerkraut for hot dogs, mustard and mayonnaise. This is macaroni salad. I wanted to film it. Like I said, things just kind of, they got busy, but it's just the leftover elbow noodles from when I made the Mississippi pork roast. So bell pepper, celery, a little bit of onion powder, salt and pepper, a tablespoon of vinegar, and three quarters of a cup of mayonnaise. And I mix it all together and it is really, oh, and a pinch of sugar. It is really good. I've never made it from scratch before, so that was exciting. There's Jensen, he's feeling good even though he did fall yesterday. Some homemade queso, which was just some white um, American cheese that you saw in my grocery haul and some salsa. I prefer to put salsa or pico de gallo in mine instead of rotel, just because I think it has more flavor. These are the last of the leftover tamales. I made a ton and I think there's like five left, maybe. They go pretty quick in my house. Then I made homemade hamburger buns, which are a little flatter than the last time I made them. And homemade hot dog buns, which I have never made and they kind of expanded out more than they went up. So they're kind of funny shaped. You live, you learn. I'm learning a lot. Um, the flavor's good though. And oh, I'm reading a book. But I've got all this laid out. My husband, Mike, and my oldest son, Xander, are at church. I am home with two sniffling kids now. Uh, just a viral infection. We did go to the doctor yesterday. Fun, fun, fun. But this was a spread for the weekend that I just did not manage to film. Um, you guys have seen my deviled eggs before and you've seen my queso. So the only things you really missed out on were this macaroni salad, which was pretty experimental for me, but I'll be making again. And the buns, which, uh, you know, flavor's good, just didn't rise as much. They're kind of flat, which works for me because I always think there's too much bread. Um, but I would like a little more fluff to those. And then these went out instead of up. So. You live, you learn. Oh, and I have some leftover tortilla chips that have been hiding out in the back of my pantry. I'm gonna pop them in the oven while I wait for people to come home because I think they might be a little stale. But that's the spread. We're gonna eat this. We ate it yesterday, we're gonna eat it today. And tomorrow I will start off my week on Monday with some cooking. All right, friends, it is Monday and we are gonna get to cooking. I actually already made um, a loaf of that no need quick bread. 
stuff's so good, so, so, so good. My family loves it. And now we're gonna get started on some cauliflower. I pulled out my bowl, I call her Big Bertha because it is a large bowl. This is two heads of cauliflower. We love cauliflower and this will be my, the leftovers will be my lunch tomorrow. So I've got my two heads of cauliflower. I just broke them up into like bite-sized pieces because that's the way we like them. My oven's preheating to 400 degrees and we are gonna get to work on these. So instead of using olive oil or butter, I use mayonnaise. And I usually use like two tablespoons of mayonnaise or so for one head of cauliflower. I've got two, they're a pretty good size. I have a really awful spatula, let me get something different. That guy was just way too flimsy. All right, so I'm gonna stir this around until there is mayonnaise on all the cauliflower and then we're gonna season it. I just find that the mayonnaise brings a better flavor than oil or butter. It doesn't taste like mayonnaise. It just tastes good and it browns nicely. It's really, really tasty. So I switched to using this on my cauliflower quite some time ago. I tried it once because I saw somebody making grilled cheese sandwiches with mayonnaise instead of butter. And I thought, well, I'm kind of mimicking a little bit of a ranch flavor when I make cauliflower anyway. So we'll just give it a shot with mayonnaise. Now that I have got the mayonnaise distributed, we're gonna season the cauliflower. I've got some onion powder. You can go as heavy or as light as you want. I'm pretty heavy handed, but again, this is two heads of cauliflower. I've got some garlic salt. You could also just do garlic powder and salt, or you could do some fresh chopped garlic if you want to. I've never tried that, but I don't think it would hurt. Just sprinkle that on pretty liberally. And then finally, dill. Love this stuff. So, so good. It's gonna come out too slow for me. I gotta open the little pour spout. A lot of dill. I always put a lot of dill on my cauliflower and it doesn't taste like ranch, but it's got this really great flavor to it. So, so good. All right, I'm just gonna stir this around, make sure everybody's covered in flavor. And then I'm gonna put it on a parchment paper lined cookie sheet in a 400 degree oven. And this is a lot of cauliflower, so this will probably roast for at least 30 minutes. Um, I like to make sure it gets little brown crispy bits around the edges, sometimes a little more than the edges. We like it nice and crispy. And I might even stir this around halfway through because it is so much cauliflower, just to make sure everyone is toasting evenly. But if you don't like it as browned or as crispy, you don't have to cook it as long. And like if you don't want as much seasoning on there, you could go lighter than I did. For instance, I did, I'm sure, at least a teaspoon and a half of dill and probably close to a deep teaspoon of garlic and onion powder just because we like a lot of flavoring, but you might like it milder. Also keep in mind, I've got two heads of cauliflower going on here. All right, everybody's mixed well into the oven she goes. All right, my cauliflower went in the oven just now. My rice is in the rice cooker. It has about 35 minutes left. And I have some sushi. I've got three sushi fillets here. I'm just gonna pour some of this teriyaki on them and let them sit for about 20 minutes or so and then pop them in the oven to cook at 400 degrees for about 12 minutes. And I'm gonna serve it with the rice I will show you when it comes out of the rice cooker. All right, I got the salmon fillets laying down pretty flat. And like I said, I'm just gonna pour this teriyaki over them and just let them kind of sit and hang out in this for a little bit. Soak up some flavor. There's only three of them, so I put probably about half a cup or so of the teriyaki sauce. And I'm just gonna kind of be gentle moving the teriyaki around in here because salmon is pretty delicate. Just making sure that everybody gets some of that sauce. And again, just gonna let them sit. They're still a little bit frozen because I took them out a little late. So I'm just gonna let them sit off to the side and thaw and marinate. All right, I took these out and I am gonna add just a little bit of extra teriyaki to each one just because I feel like I should. I 
also want to go ahead and add a little bit of garlic salt to the top of each one just because I want some extra garlic flavor in there. And then I'm going to bake this in the 400 degree oven for like 10 to 12 minutes, not long at all. And it'll be done and ready to go. For the rice, I'm going to mix some soy sauce and some wasabi together. Um, I did two cups of rice, so probably about two to three tablespoons of soy sauce, depending on how much you like it. And then I'm gonna add in a little dollop of wasabi. I almost always have this in my fridge because we love it. However, I will say this particular tube, it's about to expire. This one's got some kick to it. Usually they're not too bad at all. And I can use a lot. The first time I used it, I, I used a lot like I normally would because there's not a lot of kick. And this one has some power. <laughs> it has a lot of power. So I'm probably gonna do about half a teaspoonful, especially knowing that my husband probably really would not like it if it was super strong. And I'm just gonna whisk until I break up all of the wasabi and we'll mix this in with the rice along with some of that, where did I put it? I showed it on my grocery, oh, here it is. Uh, this stuff, you can buy this at the grocery store, Walmart, uh, H-E-B, all of them. Uh, this is so good. If you like sushi and Asian inspired stuff, this is so good. It's got like sesame seeds and uh, seaweed flakes in it. Let's see, roasted white sesame seeds, roasted black sesame seeds, salt, sugar, dried black seaweed, and powdered sesame seeds. So, so good. So this will be the rice that we serve the salmon on. And as soon as it's done cooking, I will just mix this right on in there. It's still in my rice cooker. It's almost done. It's only got a couple of minutes left. All right, here's my rice. I transferred it to a bigger bowl just so it would be easier to stir and I'm kind of tossing it a little bit to make sure that it's kind of light and fluffy before I mix anything in. It kind of packs itself into the rice cooker so I like to stir it up so it's not clumpy. Then I'm going to add in my soy sauce wasabi and I'm going to add in some of this. You can do as much or as little as you want. Probably did about a tablespoon or so give or take, and I may add more. I don't know, once I stir it around, we'll see. Again, for me, I would probably add more of the soy wasabi, but I know my husband does not just love it like my oldest and I do. <laughs> um, so I did want to go a little bit lighter on that just so he can enjoy it too. I didn't want to just kind of come across with a flavor he's not nutty about. He'll take a little bit here and there. He just doesn't like it when it's a lot. And I'm just gonna kind of keep tossing I'm gonna add a little bit more of this stuff on. There we go. This stuff is so good. I'm gonna have to order another jar of it with my groceries just because we enjoyed it. Enjoyed it so much. Hey friends, it is Tuesday. Is it Tuesday? It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday night. Obviously, we've all forgotten what day of the week it is over here, but it's Tuesday. Uh, I'm starting dinner, so I've got the last of my heavy cream in here because I need to use it up, and it's like, not a cup, probably just a little bit over half a cup. We're gonna make um, some pesto chicken. I'm kind of just throwing this together with what I have. I kind of have a plan, and I'm kind of winging it. This is chicken. If you watched last week's video, I cooked extra chicken and saved it for this meal. So I just went ahead and chopped it up and I'm going to pour it in there. It's going to reheat in there. It's actually still like slightly frozen, but that's okay. No big deal. We're going to let it kind of thaw in there and then, then we're going to add in some pesto. Yum, yum. Um, so it's going to be like a creamy pesto sauce. I'm going to put in some frozen peas and um, I'm gonna top it with some fresh diced tomatoes. And then I'm gonna serve it over some frozen tortellini that I'm cooking just right over here to the side. And that's gonna be dinner tonight. All right, everything's starting to heat up. It's starting to simmer. I do want to go ahead and add in my pesto. And I'm gonna be pretty generous because the pesto is the star of 
the sauce. does have a really strong flavor. Um, a lot of garlic, strong basil flavor, so keep that in mind if you've not had it before. My husband is not the biggest fan of pesto, but I am kind of taming it with the heavy cream. So I think this will be just fine. Now if you're using store-bought pesto, make sure you taste it and see if it has enough salt and things like that for your liking. Um, I find that sometimes these are more of like a lemon flavor, but they're kind of lacking in salt. This is one of them. So I'm gonna add in some fresh grated Parmesan cheese. That's probably about half a cup. I'm just gonna stir. And if you feel like the sauce is getting too tight, just toss in some of your pasta water to loosen it up. And that will be perfect and delicious. All right, I do wanna put some pepper in mine. And here in a minute, I will most likely add some pasta water in here. Um, I'll probably just dump the noodles or the tortellini straight from that pot into here. I think that'll be the best way for me to do things. The last ingredient is gonna be these peas, but I'm gonna add these in right before I put the tortellini in so that they don't get mushed up with everything. They're frozen, but they'll heat through very quickly. friends happy Wednesday I am starting off tonight's dinner by browning up some ground beef I think this is probably just a little bit over a pound um, it was in my freezer and I did not label it but just by looking at it I'm gonna say it's probably about a pound and a half and I'm gonna go ahead and cook this until it's done all the way through and I'm gonna add in some onions and garlic and a little bit of seasoning and we're gonna turn this into a beefy French onion casserole. Kind of just throwing a couple of things together, but I think it's gonna work. Super cold and wintry here in Texas again. Um, we don't normally get weather like this, but it's back just one week later. And this sounds like a really nice warm casserole. That will be perfect for today. So I'm just gonna keep on cooking this until it's about halfway done, and then I'll add in some more stuff. All right, so the meat is probably about halfway done. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. I'm gonna add in one diced onion. Of course, if you don't have an onion, you could always use onion powder. That would be just fine too. I'm gonna add in a little bit of thyme. Probably about a quarter teaspoon or so. And then I'm gonna add in a little bit of paprika. I'm gonna let this cook a little longer and then we'll add in some garlic. All right, I have drained a lot of the grease out. I just used the paper towel trick. Um, there's still a little bit in there and that's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and stir in some garlic. It's at about a tablespoon, maybe a little over. 
and I'm gonna let this go ahead and cook for just a couple of minutes to let that garlic warm up and kind of flavor through everything. I'm also gonna go ahead and toss in about a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. What I'm trying to do is kind of mimic the flavors of a beefy onion soup in this meat. And then of course I'll do the same in the rice. All right, now that the meat mixture is done, I'm gonna go ahead and make the rest of the casserole. We'll mix it all together in this bowl. So I have got a cup and a half of just regular uncooked white rice. You can use jasmine or basmati or whatever you want. Just don't use instant rice. You would have to change the cook time and the method for it. Um, this really does need to be uncooked rice. Now I'm gonna take a can of French onion soup. Just like that. And pour that right in. Then I'm going to take a can of cream of mushroom soup, and pour it in. And then I'm going to fill this almost all the way up, but not quite to the top, probably to about right here with water. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit of Worcestershire sauce to this, just for some added flavor. And I'm gonna stir this all together. You really wanna break up the cream of mushroom soup and get it kind of all mixed in. It's gonna add some liquid to this for our rice, and it's also gonna add like a creamy element for the casserole. And the last thing I'm gonna add is the ground beef that we just cooked. I'm gonna stir this all together. And then we're gonna put this into a greased casserole dish. And we are gonna cook this for 30 minutes covered. If it has a lid grade, if not, just put some foil on it and make sure it's covered really well. We're gonna put some butter on top and it's going to cook in the oven and the rice is gonna soak up all this liquid and that's where all the beautiful flavor is going to come from. All right, there is my casserole dish. This is not a nine by 13. Um, it's close, I can't remember what it is. It's a little smaller, but I think it's gonna be just right for this. Pour everything in here. All right, so I'm using the recipe to make the um, French onion soup rice, and it does call for a whole stick of butter cubed up on top. I am not gonna use a whole stick of butter because even though I drain my ground beef, there's still a little bit of grease in there, so I'm probably gonna just do like half a stick of butter. And I've got a butter knife right here. All right, so in the end, I probably only used about a third of a stick of butter. And it will add some flavor. It'll be super delicious. That was gonna stay. There we go. And then, like I said, I am gonna cover this with foil tightly and bake it at 425 for 30 minutes. And I'm gonna check it. So my experience with this particular rice is it's always ready well ahead of time. So at 30 minutes, I'm gonna check it, see how it looks, see where we stand with it. And I am definitely gonna bake it a little longer uncovered because I'm gonna melt Swiss cheese across the top, just like if you ordered French onion soup somewhere. All right, we're 30 minutes into the cook time and the rice is definitely not cooked. So I'm gonna let this go 
probably another 20 minutes and check it because I do want to make sure I give it plenty of time to cook with some cheese on top. A lot of the liquid has been absorbed, but I do still have some in here. So probably wait about another 20 to 25 minutes. I don't need it fully finished to put the cheese on top. I just need it less liquidy than this. All right, that looks really good now. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and top it with some Swiss cheese and probably a little bit of parsley just for some color. And I do have some Brussels sprouts over here. You can't really see them. I just roast them in the oven. And I'm gonna pop some garlic bread in there for just a minute too while we cover this with cheese. So I'm just using the sliced cheese because that's the Swiss that I have. And I'm just gonna layer it on like this. And then I'm gonna leave this part right here bare. If you're new, my oldest son does not like cheese. So I'm not gonna put any on that bottom part. We'll just put it up here on the top. We'll pop this back in the oven for probably about seven or eight minutes just to melt the cheese and get it bubbly. All right, so that is seven minutes at 425 degrees. It melted beautifully, it's all bubbly. You can turn on the broiler if you want it browned, but this is perfect for me. I'm gonna let it set for probably like eight to 10 minutes, just so everything can kind of like soak up any extra liquids and hold together nicely like a casserole, and then I will serve it. Alright friends, it is time to make some pizza dough. I am making a double batch of pizza dough. So I've got a whole bunch of my starter in there and I am adding, I'm aiming for three tablespoons of honey. I, I do like to add three to four tablespoons, two tablespoons per batch, really close to two tablespoons. So I'm adding about three to four tablespoons of honey in there for now. And then I'm gonna add in some water. And I'm gonna kind of mix that a little bit. And then we're just gonna let this sit and kind of get bubbly for just a minute. Kind of dissolve together. And then we will add in the rest of our ingredients. What's great is this only takes like, I don't know, five to 10 minutes to throw together. And it only has to rise for a little while. So it's a pretty quick, Thing to make. You don't have to do it early in the morning and give it tons of time. It's really pretty easy to throw together. We'll just give that a couple of minutes right now and let it do its thing. All right, this has had just a couple of minutes to kind of hang out. So I'm gonna add in about three tablespoons of oil. I'm using garlic oil because it's gonna be pizza dough. So I think garlic oil is gonna be perfect. And then you want one teaspoon of salt per batch. So I'm doing about two and I always add a little bit extra because you want your pizza dough to have a little bit of flavor on its own. You don't want it to just be super bland. Whoa, <laughs> my starter just bubbled right on up. All right. And then because it's a double batch, I've got five cups of flour. Let me go ahead and just put that right in the bowl. All right. There it is. All right. Lid is down. Just one. My little helper is going to Turn it on for us, just one notch. There we go. And we're gonna let this mix. Once the flour gets more incorporated, then I'm gonna turn the speed up to probably about three. And I'm gonna let it knead for six to eight minutes. And then I'm going to cover it and set it off to the side and let it just hang out for an hour or two. So that is a huge difference in the dough. I'm sure you can tell it has all come together. It looks soft. As you can tell, it's sticking a little bit. I don't worry about that right now. When you let it sit, it rehydrates itself a bit more. So I always just let it do its thing. And then I can add flour when I get ready to knead it and roll it out in a little bit. Um, I'm actually gonna let this go for another minute or two just to get it just a little bit smoother. Um, but you can see the huge difference in the dough from now until the time I just let it set. So I'm gonna, usually I would leave it in this bowl and cover it. Today I need this bowl for something else because I'm gonna make, uh, we're out of bread, like regular bread. So I've got to whip up a batch of that as well. I've shown it before on my channel. It's, today I'm using an um, Amish bread recipe just because my family likes that one. It's kind of sweet. 
but it's also really nice and the texture is beautiful. So I'm gonna whip that up here in just a second once this is done. All right, friends, we need some sauce for our pizza. I never buy pizza sauce, I always just make my own. Sometimes I use tomato paste, which I was actually gonna use, but then I remembered, oh, I've got all this tomato sauce. We're gonna use tomato sauce. It's super simple. <clears throat> Sorry, forget my voice. I'm trying to kick the last of this. As the day goes on, my voice gets worse and worse. Um, so to the tomato paste, you can kind of add whatever seasonings or flavor you want. I always add about a teaspoon of sugar because when you bake this um, at a high heat like you do for pizza, the bitterness of the tomato really, really comes out. So I like to counteract that with some sugar and then I always add in a little bit of olive oil. Today I'm using garlic oil just because I think it's more fun. And then everybody likes, you know, a really nice herb blend. So you could use just regular Italian seasoning if you want, or if you have just individual herbs you want to throw on there, that's awesome as well. It's kind of up to you, whichever way you want to go with it is just fine. But today I'm going to do this Kinder's Italian blend that I've been using for everything. I've never used it for um, anything pizza related before, so I don't know how this is going to turn out but I think it's gonna be really good. I'm gonna stir that together, and I do wanna add a little bit of salt to this. I forgot to do that. If you're using tomato paste, just add some water to it first, because it's just a seriously reduced tomato sauce. So just add some water to it to get it to a consistency you like first. We'll go a little bit of salt, and then Taste it before you spread it on your pizza. Make sure you like it. Some red pepper flakes would be really good in here. Um, in fact, I think I'm gonna toss a few in here. Not too many, because I don't think my husband would love them. But my son and I sure would, so I'll put a few in there. And we've got pizza sauce now. I'm only making two pizzas. One of them is really large and one of them is not. Um, I'm hoping to have enough pizza to eat for two days. Any of you moms out there that have like, you know, teenage sons or anything know that, man, they can put the pizza away. So I'm making a ton of pizza because I know my oldest will really eat through it, but I'm hoping that um, we'll have some left for the weekend. I am cooking tomorrow, but I may not cook on Sunday. I don't know. So I want some leftovers for sure. All right, I'm sure most of y'all have seen pizza be made before. So from here on out, I feel like it's pretty self-explanatory. I do do one special thing. Usually I melt butter, but today I'm using garlic oil and I'm gonna brush that around the edge where, you know, the crust will be. And then I'm gonna sprinkle garlic salt on it. It just gives it a really nice taste and kind of entices people to eat their crust instead of waste it. Some people don't like it. But this makes it super tasty and people prefer to eat it then. So I try to always do this. So a little bit of oil, and then a little bit of garlic salt. There we go. And now I just spread my sauce and put my toppings on. This one's gonna be pepperoni and black olives, and the other one's gonna have all the stuff on it. So I'll probably just do a music montage because as you can tell, I am losing my voice. But this is the last meal of this video, so all the recipes are linked down below. Thank you guys so, so much for joining me here. I appreciate it so much. I hope y'all are having a wonderful weekend, and I will see y'all soon.